Hey there, it's Eagle 1023 uh, coming to you from Tampa, Florida. It is Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. Um, I'm putting this video out and uh, what I've done is I've written a letter to Congressman Grayson. He has uh, provided us a, a petition to sign against the war in Syria. And of course I've signed that petition. And, and, and uh, as a result, I also wrote a letter to him and uh, to my two senators and my representative, Kathy Castor, um, expressing my uh, concerns and my views on what is transpiring here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to include that at the end of this brief uh, talk here that I'm, I'm talking with you. Um, listen, I really want to uh, address this to my spiritual friends out there. I have a lot of friends who are very spiritual. and. Um, and a lot of them are not comfortable with focusing on the negative in the world. Um, they go within themselves, they meditate, um, they're seeking enlightenment through positive means. And, and I respect that, I can appreciate that, but, um, but, uh, but I want to offer my perspective on that. Um, I can't remember who it was that said this, I think it was Jefferson, it may have been Einstein. I, yeah, in fact, I think it was Einstein. He said that it, it's not, and, and I'm you know, paraphrasing here, it, it's not that there's evil that occurs in the world, it's when good people sit idly by and allow it to occur. Um, and I say that, again, with all due respect to my spiritual friends, um, you know, you have a calling, and, and it's, it's beyond just focusing on the positive. I mean, to be in, in connection with Source is to appreciate and not appreciate, so to say, but to res respect the positive and the negative, the the, the dark and the light. Um, you know, you, you can't run from the negative, hide somewhere, uh, expecting that your positive will overwhelm the negative. Um, if that were the case, and, and again, I say this to all the light workers and the spiritual um, humans, you know, the spiritual humanity, if the meditations and all the positive energies that we're sending out had had made a difference, we wouldn't be in the state that we're in today. Um, I think this is a classroom, and we have obligations in this classroom, and sometimes we have to do things that we may not be comfortable with. Um, I don't believe that focusing on the negative um, is a bad thing. I think it's what you put out. It's the energy that you put out. The law of attraction even states this, um, you know, and uh, the hermetic principles of law, the law, the principle of polarity. Uh, is very important here. Um, there has to be a balance. There's a balance between the dark and the light, the good and the bad, as we call it in, in duality. Um, and we need your help. We need spiritual people to to act out, to to act on behalf of humanity, to speak out against the injustices. Um, every movement, and I've said this in a video years ago, every movement started with an idea. And the reason why any movement is successful is because good people decide to act. They decide to say enough is enough. And, and uh, I can point out women's suffrage. I can point out slavery. Um, I can point out, you know, all kinds of, uh, of causes that people have stood up for. Um, so it's important. It's important to me to express my views on this. And I know some will disagree. Um, I mean, the, the hard side of me says that it's a, it's a way to to deny, it's to live in denial, not to, to recognize the world around you. Um, there are natural truths, there are realities around us that all of us, you know, are, don't do not appreciate. It's 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 a tough world out here. But we need good people to stand up. We need good people to speak out. Um, that's how you make change, that's how you bring about change, that's how we create heaven on earth. And I'm fully con convinced of that and committed to do my part. Yes, I go inside. Yes, I meditate. Yes, I put out as much positive energy as I can. And yes, even when I focus on the negative, um, or the atrocities around the world or the things that aren't going well, I put a, a positive energy trying to heal those. But you still have a responsibility, I believe. Um, we all have a responsibility and an obligation to awaken our fellow human beings and to ask them to help us, to ask them to step up and represent. It's important. You know, you can't bring about serious change with a handful of people. It takes the mass. 
That's why we always hear about the collective consciousness. We, we have to steer the collective consciousness. And in order to do that, we have to make people awake and aware. We have to awaken them. You know, Some people have already been tapped on the shoulder. Um, whether you call it by source or, or some other name, they've been tapped on the shoulder and they've been said, hey, it's time to wake up. You know, you've got a, you've got a job to do here. And it's not your, your nine to five job. It's, it's much bigger than that. It's much more important. Um, and I especially address this to those of you who have children and grandchildren. I mean, if you kind of put blinders on and, and pretend like none of this is happening and only focus on the positive and not speak out against the injustices, ask yourself, what kind of future am I leaving to future generations? You know, am I doing enough? Am I doing my part to speak out? So, um, again, this was really about the letter a letter that I wrote, and it's about no war in Syria. <clears throat> it's no war, not in my name. And, um, and I kind of break it down as to the reality of life and existence as I see it. It's from, through, from and through my reality tunnel, the way I see things right now. And again, my reality, reality tunnel, those beliefs, thoughts, and perceptions that I hold are continuously changing. Um, I learn new information every day. I re reconsider things that I may have thought in the past. And that's a sign of growth. It's not a sign of weakness. You know, it's okay to say, hey, what I thought before was not exactly right. Or, you know, I, hell, I used to believe the earth was flat. But, you know, then we kind of learned that it wasn't. Um, so it's okay to change. It's okay to, to evolve, not just uh, personally and spiritually, but intellectually as well. We're all learning. Um, so anyway, I hope you appreciate what I put out. Um, I hope that it sparks a few of you into acting on behalf of humanity, that maybe you'll call your senators, your congressmen, or write a letter, uh, sign a petition. Um, again, everyone, a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people claim that it doesn't make a difference. I say it does. The reason why it may not seem to make a difference, and I'm, I'm convinced of this, is because not enough good souls act. Far too few sit on the sidelines and have other people do the work. I'm convinced of that. If everyone who truly cared, and I believe most people truly care, if everyone just took some time and spoke out. Pick an issue. Um, the war in Syria stands out right now, but if everybody spoke out, everybody that really cared, and I, and again, most people, I believe, for, in my heart, really care. If everybody that really cared said something, that would turn the tide. I'm convinced of that. That would turn the tide. Overwhelming overwhelming force through your voice would change things. And if you just do one thing, if it's the Syrian war, for example, you know, this oncoming disaster, this act, um, if we could just change that, that would be the start of something big. You could see that you, you, you take back your power. And then you can step up to the other issues that concern you, whether it's, you know, geoengineering or smart meters or... or Monsanto or, you know, those who are in the global warming camp or, you know, helping the environment. Um, it's probably a better way to put it. You could act on those as well. Um, and more people would feel empowered to speak out. You know, uh, I don't even want to go into the NDAA and all that BS. Um, that The Constitution no longer exists. There is no such thing as privacy anymore. That was sold to the highest bidders and to a secret shadow government. That's a fact. That's not hyperbole. That's not speculation. It is a fact. And we all know it now. And more will be revealed. Of this, I'm sure. Of this, I'm certain. More will be revealed. Every day there's new revelations about, you know, about what our government's all about um, and what it's become. And remember, it's, all, it's up to us. It's up to us to speak out. They're only doing what they're told. They're doing what they're paid to do. They want to keep their job just like you want to keep your job. So, And it's up to us to remind them who put them there in the first place. So, Anyway, I'm going to attach the letter. Um, again, I'm long-winded, but I just felt like expressing myself. And I hope, I hope that I spark others, you know, spur on others to, uh, to act on behalf of humanity. So anyway, it's Eagle 1023. I'm going to sign out here, and uh, the letter will follow. Thank you for your time and attention. All right. Namaste.
Um, I'm going to look up at the screen so you're going to see my eyes looking upward. I'm going to read it from my big screen. So, um, you know, uh, this comes from my heart. And this is what I sent, again, to Alan Grayson, Representative Alan Grayson, and to my representative, Kathy Castor, and my two senators um, here in the state of Florida. So um, I trust that many of you will, will agree with what I say. And it's pretty hard-hitting. Um, I'm not afraid to express myself. I'm not afraid to show my face. Um, you know, this is a journey, and, and I believe it is my right and my privilege as an American citizen to express myself. So um, this is what I had to say. Um, it says, no war, not in my name, and not with my tax dollars. The world has finally awakened to the schemes of a fascist oligarchy, and it's about time. This is an unprovoked act of aggression against the sovereign citizens of Syria, pure and simple. The truth is, we, as American taxpayers, are funding the rebel FSA, which is a covert Muslim faction, uh, which includes al-Qaeda, the same operative group created and funded by the U.S. and used as a justification by lawmakers, including presidents, to dismantle the Constitution under the guise of protecting us from outside threats. Unfortunately, it appears that these threats are much more sinister in scope and intent and they may very well come from within the ranks of government. On its face, this tragic incident appears to be a false flag operation used as a means to justify the overthrow of the al-Assad regime because they refuse to play ball with the globalist elites. We know who used these weapons. The facts have been revealed online for all to see. We are neither blind nor naive. It was those whom we, as Americans, are funding that perpetuated this, that perpetrated, excuse me, this atrocity, not the Syrian regime. Many of us recognize that this is not about chemical weapons at all. If this was about the deliberate poisoning of any human population, then we would have long since acted to protect the citizenry against the abuses of Monsanto, against the geoengineering schemes and those who elect to place fluoride in our water systems. All the world is indeed a stage and we are merely players. This is about the proposed Middle East gas pipeline. This is about weakening Russia's ties with Syria and Iran. This is about destabilizing the Middle East. This is about striking Iran. This is about Israeli, Saudi, and globalist interests. You know, Buddha once said three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and the truth. Make no mistake about it, there has been a calculated effort through our co-opted media to mislead the public at large. The fourth estate has been AWOL for far too long. They are no longer watchdogs. They have become lapdogs for corporate interests and the war machine. I've mentioned this in the past. Uh, this act, in quotes, is a deliberate diversion, a sick and twisted perversion of the facts on the ground. We, the American people, have awakened to the truth. Our so-called foreign policy interests are not in the best interests of the American people, nor the global community. Make no mistake, there will come a day when the aggressors will be held accountable and judged for their crimes against humanity. The American people do not want this war, and this fact is crystal clear. You were hired to represent us, so listen to us. Death for profit and power is an immoral crime against all of humanity. We are watching you very closely now. We get it. More importantly, least you forget... God is watching you. It is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. That was Krishnamurti, and he was ahead of his time. Um, I pray for all. I pray for peace. I pray that sanity, decency, and the will of the American people will prevail here, that Congress will listen. Um, I know they're being overwhelmed with phone calls. Be the peace that you wish to see. That's what the president said on the campaign trail. Be the peace that you wish to see. I think it's high time that President Obama follow his own advice and lead by example. This is with highest respect to all, all of you fellow, my fellow citizens, and all of the people on this planet. Um, regards to you, April 10, 23. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and thank you for listening. Namaste.